hello everybody and welcome to Jumida youtube channel in this video i'm going to walk you through how to create a resource slip in microsoft excel we're going to look at the various functions and formulas that we can use to create a resource slip similar to this in microsoft excel this video is solely for educational purpose and i want to take you through how to use the various formulas in microsoft excel so if you like this video please hit the like button and let's quickly start the video now i've already done the various designs that you need to do in microsoft excel and i'll walk you through how i did this design and then quickly rush to the grading aspect that's the most important aspect of this whole video how we can put in our grade and then the interpretation that is what we want to do here so the design is already set what i did was that first of all i defined the area that i want my resource slip to be i want it to be in an a4 size so what i did was to go to page layout and then make sure that actually my pa4 is selected so when you have a4 selected there you have your grid line show you have a dotted line showing so in my own excel this area is a4 size this area here is also an a4 size and it is a portrait a4 size i've already defined my a4 area the section that i want to work with the next thing i did was to put in all these items so first of all i put in the header now to bring it in i went to insert go down to illustrations and then pictures now when you click on pictures you have the picture from this device so since the image or the header is on your machine or on your pc you just click on this device and then you get it from your pc so that is what i used to bring in this photograph and then the next thing is the header here the results checking header for me to achieve this i made two rows here and these rows span from a to i all right and basically it just span from beginning here from a column a to the last column in my a4 size so i put in this i i made this rows here and that gave me a big a, a big box or a big cell that i'm able to put my test in you can use several other means to achieve this result but i feel the margin is okay for me then the next thing is also to make these two rows here eight and nine and then also i have this here so the content is also typed in here then after that i have the candidate details now the candidate details here under the candidate details i have my qr code here and then the photograph here okay the photograph of the applicant here so the qr code this is just an image of the qr code there are several ways you can use to generate a qr code in microsoft office application so one of them is that you can easily go to insert and then go to add-ins all right so when you go to add-ins if you don't have it already you have to go to get add-ins and then search for a qr code from the microsoft office store and then after getting it there you can now use the add-ins my add-ins and then add your qr code add-ins into your microsoft excel so that's one of the ways that you can use there will be a separate video on how to get the add-ins and then how to use it in any of the office application so watch out for such video on our channel now the next thing is to bring a photograph of the applicant here so if you have that also you're going to bring it here how do you bring that you go to insert go to illustration and then pictures and then you click on this device so this is the device that you're going to use that is what you can use to bring it the next thing is for me to put in this area similar to what i did earlier i made these cells here to create a bigger cell for me to put in this content after that i put in the candidate in this index number here so this is a bunch of merged cells all right so from column a to d is merged all right and here also from column e to i is also merged to get this bigger cell so i have candidate in this number candidate name and then type of examination and then examination center these are the details of the candidate now the focus area here is this result here so the candidates took all these subjects social studies english and so on and so forth so and these are the results of the candidate this is what the candidate scored the score of the candidate is here and what we want to do is to make sure that if the candidate score 90 and above he should have a grade here and then there should be an interpretation of the grade here so that is what we want to do now before we start this you can see that i already have the grading system defined here this is the grading system and we are saying that a candidate scoring from 75 to 100 should have an a1 and the interpretation should be an excellent 
70 to 74 is v2 and that's very good and it continues all the way to f9 which is fail so this is the interpretation that we are giving to our grades and this is the grade here so this is the whole grading system that i want to rely on now for this video the formula that we're going to use here is the ifs formula now this ifs function is a logical function in excel that allows you to evaluate multiple conditions and return a value based on the first condition that is true so it means that if the first condition or if the condition is true then it's going to return a value now this function is actually similar to the nested if function but the if is function is actually easier to read and write because all the conditions are evaluated in a single function this if is function is a tool that we use in excel to help us make decisions based on certain conditions so if the condition is true then there's going to be a return value the condition is false there's also going to be a return value we can set that as well so this is the formula that we're going to use in this particular video now if you want to have a look at how the nested if function works i'm going to leave a link to a video by remstech on how the nested if function how the simple if function works and then you can take a look at that video and see how the nested if function works but in this video we're going to use the if is function and i'm going to see how we can use this to set our grading system and then also how to get the interpretation done now for us to start with this function the first thing we need to do is to have our equal to sign stated and then we'll type our if is and then open bracket now this in this open bracket the first thing you need to do is to have your condition so this is your condition after the condition you need to have a comma and then the value so simply this is the way the whole function is you have your condition and the value the value that should be shown if this condition is true so if the condition is true the value should be shown that is basically what we are going to do now if you have more than one value uh, one condition and value or you want to test more than a condition then what you're going to do is that you're going to have condition one here and value one then another condition here condition two and value two all right so it goes on like this so this is the way the formula is crafted and this is what we're going to use to implement our results here the first thing i want to do here is to test the condition of the figure that the student scored in social studies so i'm going to say that if this cell here the figure in cell e26 is greater or equal to a number okay if this is greater or equal to 75 then I want something to be displayed in that particular box. I want a grade to be displayed and the grade I want to be displayed is A1. Now, if I press enter, I'm going to have zero because Excel does not really understand what I'm trying to say here because I didn't craft the formula properly. Okay, since the value here, A1, it's not a name of a cell. It's not making reference to a cell. I have to quote it. I have to put it in a quotation. That is when Excel will show this. I'm going to put this in a quotation. Okay. And try again. And see what happens. And now I have A1 stated. That means that the value that I want to output is not a reference to a cell. It means that I have to put that particular value in the quotation. And that is when Excel will understand it. Now, with what I've done here, this is just one condition. And the value is accompanying it. Assuming I change this, assuming this student probably scored 60, not 90, it means that there's going to be something wrong with my formula. As I cannot read this, the grading is no more correct. So I have to adjust it again. So in order to avoid this, I have to finish out all this. So what I want to do now is that I'm going to make reference to this particular grading table here, such that any changes to this grading table will directly affect the changes in this particular resource slip. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to take out all this and then now say that if the cell which contains the student's grade, that is E26, is greater or equal to this cell here, 75. And this cell here is L27, so 75. Then I want Excel to do something. I want you to show this value here. So what I will do now is I can close this and test to see whether this is correct. If I close this, Excel still gives me A1. So there's a reference made to the cells here. Therefore, I'm going to continue with this particular whole formula here. 
the next condition that I want to test is I want to check if E26 is greater. Remember E26 is the cell that contains the score of the candidate. So that is why I'm making reference to that. So if E26 is greater or equal to 70, I want Excel to show me B2. That is another condition and this condition is satisfied. So I'm going to set parameters for all these figures here any value that is greater or equals to any of these scores here should output this grade here that is what i'm going to do so the next one e26 greater or equal to 65 and i want excel to give me this all right so i guess by now you would have gotten the idea so i'm going to quickly do this here and then make sure we finish this I finish entering all the values and what I have here up to N35 that's the last value here so after finishing all this then I'm going to press enter okay so this here shows me all the conditions that I've set and the value for each of the conditions so that is what I've set I've tested all if any value between um, from 75 to 100 give it a plus and 70 to 74 b2 and so on and so forth so that is already set here all right so what i'm going to do now is to since i already have the first one done here i can easily click on this and drag it down to fill it all right but wait when i did this i can see that there's something wrong here the cell is telling me that 93 is b2 which is wrong and 64 is c4 then 65 e8 this is wrong this is not what i said the formula to do therefore means that there's something wrong here and i have to address it now what happened here is that anytime you copy this formula down the formula is going down so it's going in relative to what you've already set here so the formula is always going down you see that it has abandoned the first cells here and it has shifted down that is in relative to what you've set so it's going down but then we want to set that this here should be absolute this shouldn't move the ones here the results here should be relative but these ones here should be absolute you can do this here using the excel formula to address this i'm going to just do a change to the formula and what i'm going to do is that for each of the cells that we reference the grading system under the grading system for each of those cells we're going to have a dollar sign at the beginning of the row and also at the beginning of the column okay so we have here e26 that is a cell we are referencing and we want this cell to actually be a relative reference and that is okay for us but the cell we reference from the grading system starts with l27 now the l27 here that's a reference and we want this here to be absolute it shouldn't move downwards no matter where we change the formula even if you copy this formula to a different cell it should still be referencing this particular grading system therefore what we're going to do here is to put a dollar sign here a dollar sign here in front of the column and then also a dollar sign in front of the row so that's what we're going to do we're going to copy this and uh, do this to the, all the reference items that you have here so a dollar sign in front of the column and then a dollar sign in front of the row as well so that is how we're going to use to address this so i'm going to quickly do this make sure you look at it carefully and do this dollar sign in front of the column and then the row as well So I have that set here and then I'm going to press enter and now I'm going to try again let me copy that down us and then the problem is resolved so this is what I have here and this is perfectly the way it should be we can change this to 10 and this will be f9 so this is now making reference to each of them and this is an absolute reference that we, we did here and this is 
this side is the, is the relative referencing and this side is the absolute referencing this is perfect and this is what you've been looking for without much further ado i'll quickly run to the interpretation side and then do that as well i'm going to have my ifs here and then the first thing i want to test is that if this cell here is equal to the grid here i want you to give me an excellent so when i do this and i enter see that this is not applicable but if this is changed to 90 this is excellent so what i'm going to do here is that i'm going to start the computation for the interpretation now for me to do the interpretation i'm going to do the if it's as well here also we don't want to have the issue of the absolute so i'm going to be doing the computation as well i don't want to finish and then go back you've seen the idea of how we can set the absolute reference uh, referencing here so i'm going to do that here so if this cell here f26 is equal to this cell here all right n27 now i don't want n27 to move i want it to be absolute it should be always no matter where this is referenced it should be referring to n27 therefore i'm going to put my dollar sign in between them and then what do i want to spit out i want it to spit out excellent as I said, I don't want this also to move. I want the referencing to be exact as this. So I'm going to have my dollar sign added here. So this is what I'm, I've been talking about. This here is going to refer to this particular one here. The next condition is that if this also here is equal to B2 here, then I want the output to be very good. Likewise, this also, I want it to be absolute referencing. So this is the difference in absolute referencing. We see that the F26 here is relative. F26 here can also be F27. So when we copy this formula downwards, then it will refer to F27. That is why it is relative, relative to where it is. But the absolute ones here means that it will always be referring to these cells. It cannot change. That is the difference between the absolute and the relative referencing in Microsoft Excel. So I'm going to quickly go through and then do the rest of the coding. All right, so I have that also typed in and I'm going to copy this formula downwards to cover here. And this is what I have here. So if I change this here to 10, you see that it's going to be F9 and then fill. So this is how we use the absolute referencing and then relative referencing in Microsoft Excel. So this is all that I have for you in this particular video. If you like it, please hit the like button. If you want more of these videos, you can leave a comment for us and we are sure to give you more of videos like this. So you can go through this and then also try to do your own results sleep in Microsoft Excel. As I said earlier, this video is for educational purpose. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Click on the like button, share our videos, and then subscribe to our channel. We'll see you in our next video.